Hello there, welcome back to another edition of Poop My Filter and in this episode we're going to be looking at the Green Line 1501E or E1501 from JBL. I think the trays are the same size in the 1501 and the 1901 so it should be straightforward. However, I will still quickly show you which direction the water flows through this filter, so if you want to set it up slightly differently, or entirely differently, at least you know where the water flows. Remember, these videos are just a suggestion. You can put whatever forms you want in, you can put whatever media you want in as well. Okay, that's our filter there. And if you've already seen my video on the 1901, you really don't need to watch this video. This is just specifically for people who own this filter. So on there we've got our pump head. Okay, I actually thought this was a new filter that was coming but this has been running so I'll bring the camera in to let you have a look at how it's currently set up. Okay, so our water comes in, it then goes down through these side pieces here which has very coarse foam in. That is a pre-filter. It then goes down the side, the outside of the trays before rising back up through the trays and it exits through the middle part of this top tray. So there we've just basically got coarse foam in. Next tray down, we've actually got quite a good mix of media in there. We've got the sintered glass media, that's the JBL Micromech media. I actually think that's a little bit too dense. It's got an extremely small particle size um, and it does clog quite quickly, but that is, well, it's certainly better than ceramic rings, but it's it's not a perfect one. And uh, this one, a lot of the guys in the US will probably recognize this. This is what you would just basically call lava rock. It's actually called scoria and it is indeed a lava rock. Unfortunately, a lot of its internal structure is actually sealed, so most of the useful surface area is on the outside of that, which isn't ideal for an aquarium filter. You want something a lot more porous than this. And if you check the video description, there is actually a link to a video I've done where we'll look inside various types of filter media. One of them is the scoria, and you can see just how sealed the inside is. I know there's a lot of folks really swear by this, but it's, you can get a lot better media than this. It's okay, good budget one. If you haven't got much money, by all means use that, but it's not perfect. In fact, I can, I can feel a measurable difference between the weight of that and the weight of that and that. Both those pieces together are much lighter than this piece, so this piece is obviously much more dense. There is a hell of a variability between the different pieces of this, so it's not an ideal one when you're trying to max out a filter. Right, next tray down, we've got a medium density pad, which has got more of the Micromech on top of it. It's actually pretty clean, that as well. I'll do a job. Um, yeah, and underneath that, we've got another medium density pad with the bumps, unfortunately, the wrong way up. They should have been bumpy side down. Then in the bottom tray, we've got coarse foam. One, two. And we've actually got some more of the micro mech in the very bottom of here. And that's actually been used as the like, primary settlement. So we will reinstate that. Well, not that particular media, but that idea. We will reinstate that idea, but we'll just use a different sort of media. I'm actually gonna empty all the trays out apart from this one. I'm going to take that out and leave those in. They're the only two foams that we are keeping from this filter. There you go. That's all the filter media that was in that filter. And really between the two different types it's actually a pretty effective sort of setup. It's not bad at all. Okay so we've got four trays in this filter. The first one is mostly a pre-filter outside bits there but this middle bit can be utilized for media and other things and then we've got three trays in the bottom of the filter 
The bottom tray is going to be for our mechanical filtration and that is simply going to be coarse, medium and fine foams. I'll quickly cut them, get them fitted and bring you back. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to pour some Eheim Micro Mech. Not Micro Mech, that's the JBL media. Eheim Mech. It's basically a hard ceramic ring. It's very small. And when that goes in the bottom, it's going to diffuse the flow all over the place. So the flow is going to be really spread out in the bottom of there. Without some sort of primary settlement, the water just comes down from the tank and then straight up onto the foams. This settles it down a little bit and just helps to settle out a little bit of the muck before it hits the foams. And that helps to increase our maintenance times. And, I, and by that I don't mean, it doesn't, it doesn't help to increase how long it actually takes to maintain this thing. It increases the intervals between the maintenance. So instead of going one or two months, it might go three or four months. And that makes a hell of a difference. Okay, there's maybe half a litre of it in there or something. Hopefully you can see that through the side. We've only got about three quarters of an inch or an inch to play with at the bottom there. Not much. I really love having square trays or almost square trays. You literally just cut four sides, snip the corners off and that allows you foam to sit in there very nicely. So in our bottom tray the water is coming up from the bottom of the filter. First of all, it's hitting a coarse pad, bumpy side down for maximum surface area. Then a medium pad, bumpy side down for maximum surface area. Then it's hitting a fine pad to get all of the, the fine muck. That will enable all of our media above here to stay very clean and that will enable it to stay effective. Now if you don't have access to the pads with the bumpy bits on, don't worry about that, just use flat ones. Flat ones work pretty much just as well. The bonus of the bumpy ones is, not only do you have a little bit more, well quite a lot more, contact surface area to allow for real heavy muck to build up, but when you have a bumpy pad like that, and you put another bumpy pad on top of it, you end up with loads of gaps between the two pads because you've got a flat side and then you've got a bumpy side and that traps a hell of a lot of muck the void is actually useful right so that's our bottom tray done put that in there okay so we've got two trays filled with 1.5 kilos each of biohome ultimate uh, anybody in the US watching one kilo is equivalent to 2.2 pounds so here we're using about three pounds of media in each tray. So it didn't go in now. It's fitting together well. And now we're just left with our pre-filter tray. Remember, water goes down the sides, goes down the sides of the trays and then rises back up and exits through the middle of here. So in the middle of here, we do have room for more filter media. We can actually fit another kilo of media in here. So that'll be three plus one. That'll be four kilos of media in total in here. Or we could put about half a kilo and then we could go with another pad. You might want to put a carbon pad. Now that's a carbon impregnated pad. You could easily put that on the top. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to finish this off with a carbon pad. Not only does it look nicer and it's going to make it packed safely for transport back to Leslie who sent me this, um, it's going to give us all three parts of the filtration. It's going to give us mechanical, biological and then chemical. So we've got everything within one filter. Right, so we'll drop roughly 500 grams of media in there. And that's about right. And then we'll put our carbon pad on top. Absolutely beautiful. There you go. And that is our filter finished. 
So now we've got things in the correct order. We've got the coarse foams on the outside, which will catch a lot of heavy muck. We've then got the mech in the bottom, which again will catch heavy muck, and it'll help to save the foams from taking so much heavy muck. Water comes up through there, hits in the right order, coarse, medium, and then fine pads. It then goes through one, two, and two and a half trays full of Biohome Ultimate, which is our biological media. And then it exits through here, which is a carbon impregnated pad for our chemical filtration. There you go, that's the job done. Ich habe pimpen de filter pumpen. And that's the wrong notes. Where's my notes on the JBL? There they are. <laughs> okay, we'll just finish off with a few notes on what the manufacturer says about this and what I, I say about this. We know the JBL filters are good. I don't really need to tell you how good they are. They use the space very effectively. They've got a decent flow rate as well. This one pumps approximately 1400 litres an hour, so you are going to get plenty of muck pulled out. You're going to get a good flow through the filter and then you're going to get plenty put back to the tank. Now the manufacturer says the A1501 is for tanks of approximately 160 to 600 litres. And for you guys in the US that is from 42 US gallons to 158 US gallons. So if we're talking about the real world filtration which is the full cycle which is really what we want to be trying to aim for with this. We don't want to be calling this a nitrate factory, which is what 99% of canister filters are. We've set it up not to be a nitrate factory. So in the real world, if you didn't bother with that foam in the top, it would be suitable for roughly 400 litres of a normally stocked tank. That should provide the full cycle. And 400 litres is approximately 152 US gallons. So it will filter quite a big tank. If you've got a heavily stocked tank, you can halve that because it could take up to two kilos per 100 litres to deliver that full cycle. If you've got something like predators in the tank or Malawi cichlids, something that you're feeding a lot and they're pooping a lot. So they're producing a lot of waste. You need more media to cope with more waste. It's just as simple as that. So there you go, just a little bit of useful information at the end. That's fully pimped up now, ready to send back to Leslie. Thank you very much to him for sending me this up. And if you've got a filter that you'd like me to upgrade and take a look at, please, by all means, get in touch. My contact details, as always, are in the video description. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.